And so we, we, we took the horse-drawn hackney cab to, to Kingsbridge Station, which is, of course, now Houston Station. And I thought myself, my, I looked out the window and thought on my way down there, my God, I got back 100 years. And then I got into Kingsbridge Station and walked onto the platform, and there I saw a diesel engine, diesel train. And I thought, my, I've gone forward 100 years because we, I'd only seen steam trains in my life. Um, so I was very confused, and we, we got on the train, and it was the first day, I have other little memories of, of, of life in, in, uh, before that, but it's the first, that day was the first I remember from beginning to end. And uh, we got off the train uh, at Clark Jordan station, we met by the local garage men with our new car, um, which was a Hillman, Hillman Minx and another Wakata for all the luggage and stuff and for the rest of the time to get. And we arrived at Waterloo. And when we arrived at Waterloo, I, the first thing I saw, I didn't see the, the house really, I saw the lake. And I thought, wow, this is absolutely fantastic. And I ran down the, 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 the lawn towards the lake. Unfortunately, halfway down, the caretaker of the, of the, of the, of the, of the house, Tommy Foote, who became our gardener, had lain a, a, a night line, uh, which he was putting hooks on. He was in the kitchen. Um, so I ran and stayed at this night line and hooked my short trousers up on, 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 the, on the hook. And uh, I couldn't get free of that. I wondered what the hell it was because I couldn't see why it what was holding me. And I turned around to see this six foot one eyed man coming out of the, out of the, uh, out of the kitchen in Waterloo armed with a carving knife. And he, what he was doing, in fact, was he was there to, to, uh, to cut me free. But I saw this coming, this huge man coming down towards me. And I had my first little bit of sort of out of the box, box thinking. And I unbuckled my belt and jumped out of my short trousers and ran off into the ditch. And for the next 35 years, he never let me forget that. And, but that was my first day in, in, in Waterloo. And uh, shortly afterwards, um, um, if we have the first slide now, or the, sec or the, the second slide now, uh, um, um, that is Guy Landon. Guy, and that's me on the left. Guy Landon was a, a wonderful guy, um, wonderful man who lived up in Banagher, and he kept his boat, the seabird, on, on, uh, on, on the deep water quay at Waterloo. And, uh, he was the person who sort of first got me sailing. Uh, and uh, uh, he used to disappear for six weeks every year with his friend Bobby Woods. And they used to sail out the Shannon Estuary in the Seabird. And they would not, wouldn't be heard of, seen of again for about six to eight weeks. Um, and then he suddenly would roll up again and, and, and started sailing up and down the Shannon. So I learned a lot from him. Um, and then the next slide, please. Uh, then my father bought the Borneen. He bought that off Bunny Goodbody, the same person that um, my mother had bought Waterloo Lodge off. Um, and my father uh, was never a great sailor, he, <laughs> but he liked to dress up. He liked to put on his shiny white uh, Macintosh and, and yachting hat. And he liked to sail in, as long as the weather was calm enough. He never really got very good at it. Um, and uh, we were often going, uh, we often sort of uh, uh, got ourselves into difficulty. And uh, um, he, uh, he, he, he quite often used to, when he was coming back into the deep water key, we could completely out of control and he, he'd whack past it and disappear into the rushes beyond. Um, and we, we can try the next slide, please. Um, that was a little sketch he made, which is um, his, his daughter Imogen and her friend Anne, um, having been in the rushes, um, trying to extricate themselves and, and, and get back to the key. And I'm on the key shouting instructions. Not that I would have known very much to what to say. 
Um, but uh, we had a, a, a lovely time on the, with the Bornean, and I used to love just sitting in, in right up in the bow and listening to, to the water, lapping around the, around the, around the bow. Um, and we go on little expedi expeditions, and we went the first time we went, uh, we went down to the water, to the Drummanier Regatta. And uh, um, my father got to the start line and, and attempted to, 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 to put the anchor down behind Goose Island. And Colonel Hooker came out of the, out of the, out of the starter's hut with his megaphone and said, well, you can't anchor there. And my mother pop, popped her head out of the, out of the companion way and said, it's all right, sir, he can't anchor anywhere. And uh, the following year, we, uh, we, we tried to get back to the, Uga to the Ugata, and we got as far as, as, as Cameron Island, where we picked up Tony and Jordy, Tony Leslie Smith and Jordy Helmer, who were friends of my father's, and we were taking them on to, 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 to the Ugata. But we got, only got uh, just beyond, beyond Cameron Island, when, and we could see all the, all the boats in the distance in during a race, when we were hit by this huge line, line squall. And bar for the fact that the, 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 both, the, both the main seat and the, and the jib were, were cheated. But fortunately, the cheat was, was a little bit rotten and, and they gave way. Otherwise, I think we were, we were, we were gone, like all the boats in the, in, in, in the out racing that day. Um, so, the, and so, so that was that. And then uh, uh, um, then after that, I, 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 I got a, a, t a taste for sailing um, and I, I and my mother or father used to take me down as a small boy to do gasses. Can we try the next slide? Um, and that's again one of his little impressions of the Shannon, of the, of the gasses. Um, and what would happen for the first couple of years was, was they would ferry me backwards and forwards each day. And then they got a bit fed up doing that. So they, uh, they, I, I got a tent and I used to, to go into the, into the, into the, uh, into the field at the back um, of the club. Well, this was way long before the, uh, they built the houses, the holiday cottages. And I tented there. And as a next door neighbor, I had Martin McGuire, who was a charming old man, or not so old. But, um, and he, he, was, he, he looked after me. He, he kept me fed in the mornings. He, he gave me bacon and cabbage for breakfast. Um, and I didn't normally need to eat anything after that until tea time. And tea times in the regatta, uh, the regatta then were, were, were amazing. They, um, they were run by a whole lot of ladies, uh, which them, uh, in, in, the, in the back, those of you who can't, don't know, don't remember the, 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 uh, the uh, club before the, the, before the new one was built, the, the sort of front you, you was open and you, you, uh, you put your Shannon sails and everything like that. And the back was a, a, big, a big place, where, where a big open area where you could store boats. And uh, on two sides, there was, a, there was a sort of a counter with a grill. And this was where the tea ladies made the teas. And the grill was to keep all the, all the wasps away. Um, so you paid your two and six or your two bob or whatever, whatever it was, and you got given your cup of tea and you could always you could come back with as many cups as you, want, um, you wanted. And they always produced the most amazing amount of cakes and, and sandwiches and scones. And my favorite was a, 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 a scones and, and, and marrow and ginger jam made uh, by the Miss Bruce's. The Miss Bruce's uh, Dot and Gwen Bruce were, were with divine couple who uh, who lived uh, lived uh, down by Kilbourne and were um, were the nieces of the three Miss Bruce's who lived the, uh, who lived in in the cellar just up the road. Um, so we, we so we knew them quite well, but later on when when they'd gone and there were, but there was still lots of tea going on uh, and lots of tea ladies. There was a lot of chat about. Um, about the sailors that had just joined. 
and uh, uh, they didn't know me so well and I would they called me young Hodgkinson oh young Hodgkinson I heard is doing frightfully well and 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 oh and you know commonly and Captain Lynch uh, he's young married that young Milligan woman I believe um, so Joe and I used to used to greet each, greet each other in the morning one stage there's good morning Lynch good morning Hodgkinson and then one day Joe produced found a, 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 an army officer's poe uh, under the bed officers for the use of um, it, a lovely China thing which we were emblazoned with the with the with the with the army army emblem and we so we thought well that would make a nice a nice trophy so we asked Krista who the old among the older ones of you will remember was a, a charming um, German lady who lived up near Lot, on Lot Reed. and she 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 made all the necessary she, she did the writing on it and we gave it away as a prize different prize to, as, as, as we felt fit, someone who'd, who'd done reasonably well that, that, that yeah, but it not in mess, necessarily in the sailing. I don't know what happened to the, to the, to the, to the thing, it probably got broken, but if anybody knows where it might be, I'd love to see it again. Um, uh, so then what, um, oh, so, um, so anyhow, yeah, um, uh, then, um, uh, with, with, uh, on with my tent, eventually I, I made it to Lock Wee Regatta and, and, and uh, camped up there. I'm down in Lock Dag, um, in, the, in the Regattas down in Lock Dag. Uh, what went on, there was an awful lot went on in, 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 the, in, the, in the camp, in the, in the tenting behind the, behind the, behind the club, um, in the campsite. And, but we always said, well, what, what went on in the campsite, and there was a lot went on there, stayed in the campsite. And we were pretty good about that, I think. But they, I think a lot of things did go on, and not a few, not a few pregnancies as well came out of it. Uh, but, um, up, in, up in Lock Lee, up in Lock Lee, it was slightly quieter on, on, on the shore. Um, but I went up there one year to uh, crew for Jocelyn Waller in the 53. And and uh, Michael Goodbody, who th that would be uh, Reggie's Mike, brother Michael, not uh, not not uh, Posey Goodbody's son, uh, Michael, um, and uh, so we had great fun, great time there. And I sent a, 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 a postcard back to my fa father saying so the weather was a bit wild and we nearly broke um, mass, but. Uh, that the tent was behaving much better. And he made another little sketch. And I think we have the next slide. We got the next slide of, 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 of the tent behaving badly or, or the, the tent behaving better. Um, and but, but that was quite fun. It was, uh, and, um, and it was up in Lock Lee, I think in, 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 in uh, 1962, that uh, my father came up there and he did the next, we'll try the next, uh, the next slide. Um, yeah, um, there's uh, that, uh, and you can see the fox there. Um, and we, we sailed out, out, out off there. And that was when Bunny persuaded us to get a, a, a Shannon Wonder sign. Uh, he was very active in, in trying to get the class or to keep the class going, so he was looking for all sorts of new, uh, new, um, new uh, talent, um, and so uh, so we got the seventy-eight, which uh, which um, my father christened Goosander after after our, uh, our, our family motto was a goose lighting, or our family motto was anything to secure peace. And our family motto, our family crest, was a goose alighting on a rock in a stormy sea, which I always thought was a slightly inappropriate to have that boat, boat called Goosander, but never mind, it kept, it stayed going. Um, so I remember the 70, 60, so it must have been 63 in my first regatta, 
or my first, the first race I had in Lockdag, in Lockdag was a, it was a club race. And as far as I remember, there were just four or five uh, uh, entrants. Um, and uh, at, this, at, the, at, the, at the final mark, which was, I think, the mountain area, we were ten, ten, turning back for, to run back for, um, uh, for, for, for the club. Uh, Bunny was ahead, and I was second by about four or five boat lengths. And then there was a bit of a gap, and I think uh, 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 Squirrel, Joyce and Squirrel Green, I think, in 45 of them came in after that. Um, and there was a little fisherman out by at, um, at uh, Hazel Point, and as, as Bunny passed him, he said to Bunny, Oh, Dills, the young ones are you going to catch, you know, Mr. Le Fort, Mr. Le Mr. Goodbody, and I, I saw him, I saw him, my God, and he, I saw him looking back, and I saw Bunny looking back at me, and I thought, oh my God, he really thinks that's going to happen. Little, I, little did I think at the time that it actually was going to happen. So we went into the first, first, first regatta, and uh, um, I got um, Bernard Darcy and Tony Knight to, to crew for me. Uh, Tony and, and, and Bernard were, were brilliant in the pub, uh, um, uh, but not so brilliant about getting up in the morning for, to get the boat ready. And I found that, that uh, even though I woke them up in the morning, um, uh, I had to get the boat on the water by myself. In other words, I, I'd, I'd get anybody who would give me a lift to, to slide the boat into the water. And then I go take it across the, to, the, to the jetty and rig it by myself. Um, and not very often by this time, most of the other boats in the, in, in the, in the race had gone off to the start line. And one particular morning, um, Bernard and, 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 and Tony were staggering, staggering their way down towards the boat. It was already in rig waiting for them. And Colonel Hooker came out of his start up with his, with his uh, megaphone and he shouted into the megaphone at me, Hoskinson, what are you bloody well waiting for? A ready last band send off? Um, and indeed, that was probably a good, probably what we did, did need. We would have woken, woken up Bernard and, and, and Tony anyway. And uh, so, uh, uh, so the regattas went and came and went, and that was fine. Then we had the, um, then Barney said, why don't you have a regatta at Waterloo? And we thought, well, that was quite a good idea. We, we said we'd give that a shot. So it might have been 1964 was probably the first regatta at Waterloo. And there were only four boats. There was um, uh, Bunny in the 61, um, my own boat, the 33 with Joe and Lily Leach, and one other, which I th can't remember now, but I think it's a four, it was the 45, probably Joyce and Squill Green. But after that, I think we had 11 or 12 boats the following year. And within a couple of years, uh, we had, uh, we were having sort of 20 boats. And it became, uh, could we try the next, next slide and see what happens with that one? Um, and I don't, I can't remember which year what that was, but uh, uh, we had great fun in the gases. It became a sort of a, a warm up the gases. For, 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 the, for, the, for the main regatta. So we got a good, we, we finished up with a good, good quantity of boats, 20 or more. And uh, we try another, another, another slide. Down, down at Deepwater Quay, uh, because all the, um, we'd, Teddy would bring the, the Miranda up to, to, to extend the quay so we could, we could hang off more boats of it. And then when I had the St. James, I could also use the St. James for the same thing. And there you see Colonel Hooker in the middle um, talking to somebody about to say, there's my father is just uh, on the right, he's sitting down. And I think in the, in the, on, the, on the key side there, there's the, there's the Arachne, I think is that, was uh, the, the Joe, Joe and Lola's boat. Um, and uh, we had there were lots of little, so there were lots of little incidents on, 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 on the jetty. That was the place to be, really. And what, what would happen is all the, the houseboats would, would moor themselves into the, into the rushes 
just beyond the key. And on one very hot, hot, hot um, regatta, um, the, after the racing had finished, Robin, John, uh, Robin and, and Juliet Cubitt were trying to persuade their youngest son, Hugo, to, 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 to learn to swim. And they had him halfway down the jet, halfway down the, the stairs of the, of the jetty. Um, and he was putting up a, a, a big manful struggle because he didn't want to be taught how to swim. And Joe Leach was sitting on the Arachne, watching all this from the rushes. And he shouted across to, 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 to Robin, save the pick of the litter for me. And uh, so we, and, and uh, uh, we're we get, we're just before that. Tony Dean, who had, the, who had bought the 55 off Peggy Turbot, was, was down in the key lacing the, his orange, the orange sail off the 55 onto the spars. And a new, um, uh, a new and very brief owner of a new Shannon One design, design arrived. Um, and he had his dog with him. And he, he, he'd come down to see what, where, where there was going to be any fun with this, uh, this sailing lark. lark. And um, anyhow, his dog wandered up to, up to Tony Dean's sail and lifted his leg against it. And Tony Dean, without, without a second thought, just booted the, boot, booted the pooch up the arse and sent it into the water. And I don't blame him for it. But it didn't take, the, the, the owner of the dog didn't take kindly to it. And he, not only did he not launch the boat, but he never ever sailed. And I don't know who he sailed the boat to, but it's... Um, uh, and the, the key had, had, uh, had the reputation of being haunted. Um, back in the 50s or 40s, uh, um, there was a, a, a great storm and a, and a barge uh, that would normally have called into pulled into Kilgarvan Key across the across the the, 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 the bay there, uh, pulled in to weather out the storm. And in the middle of the night, they had uh, they uh, had such an, a nasty experience that they up sticks and and, and left um, left the quayside um, rather than stay because it was they they said it was. They said there was something on it that they didn't like. Um, Guy Landon um, had a, an experience also um, when with the seabird that he was against the key, and he he told me once he 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 had um, steps on 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 the on the, on the deck above. And he said he said uh, and he'd heard all this thing about the about the uh, about the ghosts. But being a, a, a First World War uh, fighter pilot and had out, outlived the Red Band, well, he wasn't going to be frightened off by some some ghost or other on the quayside. And he popped his head up over, up over the, the 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 companionway to, to tell the tell the whatever it was to bugger off. But he said, which he did so, he got confronted by this flaring nostrils and mad eyes right in right in his face. And he said he fell backwards into the into the into the uh, into, into the into the uh, into the cockpit because he got an awful shock. And I, uh, he, he said afterwards, but that of course wasn't half the shock that Miss McIver's pig got when confronted with with with, with the sight of of, uh, of Guy, Guy Landon peering up over the over the top of the boat, and the, and the pig in one merciful squeal jumped onto the back onto the quayside and ran back up to the. To, to, the, to the house, so that was maybe what the, what uh, the the, the, the uh, bargemen had experienced in the first place. So that that, that was the key. Um, uh, so then we went on. Uh, well, can we try another 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 slide? So one of the races we we raced for. Um, I, I refused to give up any cups um, or mugs for, for racing. So everything was uh, either um, either uh, uh, a painting done by my father, and this one he did a, a he did one every year for whoever won that particular race. And this this particular race time it was it was it was Philip Main. You can see the 
the 80, what was, what was his number, 80 something. Um, and uh, I, I apparently was second. Well, he, he, he was, uh, he was, um, he, he filled in all the, he, he always did the same. He only um, filled in, he filled, made the whole painting, he only filled in the, 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 the winner at the end. So he put me in second place each, each, each year, I think. Um, not that I would have been second to, 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 to the main brothers very often, and probably not on my regatta, because I'd, been, I'd have been running it anyhow, and we wouldn't have time to be out sailing. But if somebody had been sailing my boat, they'd, they'd have been doing jolly well if they were second. Um, so the, those continued on. Can we try another slide? I'm not quite sure what the next slide is. Oh yeah, so uh, yeah, well, we can stay with that. So anyhow, so we went on doing more regattas and uh, I wasn't wildly happy with the 78. I didn't seem to be doing that well with it. And I had a good sale made by Taskers at this stage. And, uh, uh, um, and Johnny McWilliam came up made by Taskers and Philip Watson down there in, in, in Cross, Crosshaven. And Johnny William came up one, one time to see what was wrong with it. Uh, but in actual fact, we couldn't find anything wrong with it. Um, and we'll come back to that story in, 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 a, in a later part of this. But uh, and it, all in, it, it, ended, it ended up in me deciding um, that I wasn't going to go up to 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 the following uh, regatta in 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 Lot We because I thus felt I was doing too badly, and I got chatting with Jimmy Fury, um, and uh, the outcome of it was I don't know who suggested what to who, uh, but the outcome of it was that I was going to go up and helm his boat. He would he would sheet hand because he was a good sheet hand, um, and I would bring my sail, and. Um, so that's what we did, and Bernard crewed for us up in 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 Lock Lock Reef on the on in, in the one hundred eight, and we ended just we got into the one hundred eight, and just uh, we just took off. The boat was just so completely different to anything I'd sailed before, um, and uh, at the end of the regatta. I said to Jimmy, well, would you build me a boat? And he was delighted. He said, yes, he surely, he surely would. Because he said that I was getting so depressed that I had so little, nobody had actually won anything with, with any of my boats um, and that uh, I wasn't going to make any more. So I, I said to him, well, I'd, I'd love you to make me a boat. But I pointed to the floorboards and said, and, but you know, if you see you've got very heavy floorboards and if there's anything else, you can lighten up, you know, please do so. So um, I said I didn't need a, a spars or, or I even had a centre plate and everything. Um, and I said, just, you know, send me a postcard when, when it's ready and I'll come up and collect it. You don't need to paint it or anything. I'll do all that when I get it. Um, so in, in due course, he, he, uh, he sent me the postcard and Bernard and I went up to collect it. And at that time, there was no uh, driveway down to his place. You had to drive across the fields, which we did, and uh, with a trailer, and uh, went to get the boat. And Ben was sort of saying, oh, we're going to need more than the two of us to lift the boat. And I said, well, let's, let's give it a, a, a go. So uh, he got to the bow, and I got to the stern, and we just lifted it up. Without, it, was, it was like sort of lifting a, 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 an enterprise dinghy, I suppose. Certainly nothing nothing more. And Ben said, oh my dear, that's me. And we just popped in on, 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 the, uh, on the trailer, tied it down and everything, and, and drove away care carefully. Not like, like, not like Donald Gleason did with, with in, in the Hands series, uh, where he drove away with, with his boat, uh, bouncing <laughs> all his, his worth over, over the fields. But so, so we, we, I, I painted up the, 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 uh, the 112 and off we went. I, um, and 
we won the first 23 races that we went out in for the club races, which was all very well for me, but not very good for everybody else. And it doesn't do very much for the morale of, the, of, of, of a club to have someone winning all the races. And uh, so anyhow, quite rightly, the boat had to be measured. Um, and I, as far as I remember, the first time she was measured, I was in Forbes and then I came down and I saw it being measured. And that was fine. What I didn't realize was she was measured twice after that. <laughs> and in the, and, and in the, in the ensuing kerfuffle all they could think of all they could come up with was that the that the ribs were a sixteenth of an inch too narrow and that they were going to to, to disqualify me as a son in one design on that account and apparently he told this to to, to, to to Jimmy and Jimmy apparently said to them if he did if they did that he would never make another shine in one design um, I was blissfully aware of any, of, unaware of any of this, but anyhow, they backed down on that, and they, they luckily, so true for them. Um, um, and and um, Jimmy continued making Shannons, um, some very, very good ones, and basically saved the class in many ways. Up until then, it had been only Walter, really, who'd been making them, and Walter was getting old, and there weren't going to be that many more uh, shans he would build. And he, uh, and there was nobody to take, to take over from him. So if, 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 uh, if Jimmy hadn't started building seriously, then the, the, cl the class would have been in, in, in a lot of trouble. Um, anyway, he did, and he's, and the class went from strength to strength. And I must say, there were some very good boats in, 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 in and not all just Jimmy Fiori boats. Um, I've been, the, the, the boats that I sailed, I, I, I went then from after that, that regatta, and uh, I, the following year, I, I, I worked as sailing secretary and, and did all the, the, the racing from, from the shore and lent my, my boat to Philip Watson, who, who won the regatta with her again. So that's good. Um, but after that, I, I really felt I'd done my bit there, and I rather preferred to, 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 to crew than, than, than be at the back and, and, and have to take all the, all the, all the shit. <laughs> and and uh, it was it, that you could do so much more as a crew. And so I, I, I loved sheet handing, and yeah, I particularly liked third handing. And I remember once third handing for Joe and Lola in the 33 up in Lot Ree. And we'd been, we'd come sailing down from somewhere north, way up north, in a strong northerly wind. And we were tearing down back to the club and the finish. Um, and uh, uh, I was uh, very, I was very keen on, on 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 trying to get boats to surf, and instead of sitting on the back of the boat, um, or getting it was to get her one to move forward, um, to dip the bow until the bow could hard was almost going to power under the water, and then jump backwards and and, and get the boat to to shoot up on the, on the, on the wave. And so I would jump back onto Joe, and Joe would jump back onto. The little woman steering, little woman at the helm, as he used to call her, and she would try and beat the two of us off, and and we'd oh, we'd all scream. I, uh, Joe would scream even louder than, louder than everybody, everybody. And like this, we were making good good way, and we overtook Tony Dean in the ninety six. And Tony Dean had somebody and had a third hand who had never been out sailing before. And she looked across at our, us and started screaming, as we were screaming. And we thought she was, she was screaming because, because uh, just to join in on the fun. But so anyhow, we, 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 got, we went past them and we got ashore. Tony Dean came up and at the, at the heads off the two of, two of us, because he said that the girl was screaming in all seriousness because she thought that if the people next door to her, 
were, were, were screaming and they were two, two grown men, then there must be something to scream about. And so she got, got out of bed and never went sailing again. Um, uh, but other than that, yes, I love, I love, I love that handling. And this particular photograph was done, it was in the Kil taken in the Kilgarvan regatta. I don't know who I was sailing for, some bald headed git, um, but nice guy as far as I remember. And, uh, but, uh, but the, 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 uh, the caption, it was, I think it was a, it was a, uh, something, it was something you put on Facebook and the caption was, how the mighty have fallen meaning me and I was third hand. And I thought, oh dear, well that's a pity because I mean, in actual fact, it's far more important place than people give it credit for. And I think, I'm thinking to myself, really a, a, good, a good third hand should be given all the, the kicking strap, downhaul and center plate to do and leave the, the helm to helm and the sheet hand to sheet. And that if, if a, a, but, uh, because so many, so often the going round the windward mark, you see the helmsman who has put everything so that he can put, he can do it all from the sun, and he's so busy trying to get under the feet of the of the of the sheet hand who is blocking his 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 control lines that they, he 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 doesn't look at the, the boat is sus gone round this. The, the, the mark behind him, and he's, he's in a very vulnerable position to, to, be, to, be, to be overtaken. And on a good boat, I really feel that the, 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 the third hand should, have, should do those, uh, do those, um, those tasks. And, 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 and I, I would like to see third hands, I'd like to see boats rigged up like that. Um, also, uh, we, the, the other day we were talking about courses. On, on, on the Zoom, and I was asking if there'd been any um, courses where they do in uh, the, 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 the new Olympics or upwind, the downwind, downwind sausage things. And, and I was wondering, I was looking, I was watching a, a race on, on, on the YouTube of, of the stars doing it, and seeing, seeing that when they went on the downwind leg, the, the crew would go up beside the mast and 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 unfinuked a bit and in the star class that was allowed on the downwind legs and i was just wondering whether you could do something like that in in, in the shannon to have the the third turn going up um if necessary on the on on, on the on the fourth ward and 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 holding the holding the mast and the and the and the and the and the, uh, and the shroud whether you couldn't Help, help rock the boat downwind a bit. It was just a thought. You could <laughs> give it a try, maybe. Anyway, um, uh, oh, so that's about it on the, uh, on on the, on the sailing. Um, uh, the other thing I want to talk about now is is the is the cap sizes. Um, I was rather kind of keen on the cap sizes, and I, so I think we can go to our next. Um, our next slide now. Back in Lockley, I suppose one always remembers one first capsize, a bit like the first, when the first time one makes love. But the first capsize for me was in, in Lockley when I crewed for Jocelyn Waller and, and Michael Goodbody, um, as I'd said before. And we went out in, 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 in one race and it was a sort of a reaching start going down reaching running start going down uh, from, from, from Hudson's Bay and uh, um, we got halfway down and all of a sudden the boat started to wobble and we both looked back and, and Jocelyn wasn't in the boat. He'd left un, 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 without saying a word <laughs> and in fact what had happened is he'd, he'd put his, head, his feet under his toes under the toe straps and so straps had given way and he'd fallen out. Well, five seconds later, the inevitable happened. We, 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 uh, we capsized as, as, uh, as uh, uh, my father's sketch now in that little, in that little, little cartoon. 
a fall is a terrible thing, said John Jorrocks. Um, other than that, my capsizes weren't all that frequent. Um, if I was going to capsize, it seemed to be around in the 78, and it seemed to be around about the hour mark. The first one was coming past the hour mark, a, a little bit coming almost planing and, and a little bit too close to the Irish shore. And uh, tipping, tipping, the, um, tipping the rudder off a rock as we flew along, and uh, the, the, the rudder jumped out of the, out of the pintles and just scared off back. Um, and, and I was left hanging on to nothing. Um, and it was all right for about 10 seconds because we were in perfect control. And then the inevitable happened and we went for, uh, for the, uh, 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 we went arse over tip. Um, didn't do much good to the rudder as far as I recall. Um, another time we, tried, we capsized at the time, at the hour mark, we were jibing around it and uh, that was fine except that the, the boat jibed but, but the, the sail stayed where it was because it was hooked around the, our, our remark. So we sort of subsided rather gently after that um, and, and graciously. This is of course in the, years, in the days before, even if we, before, before you could, um, uh, before, before you had to re-round the mark if you, if you touched it. Um, anyhow, we have no question of us doing anything like that. Um, but by far the best place to, 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 to capsize, if you could do it, was down at the St. David's mark. Now this is the mark that's sort of uh, between the outer distance mark of the number one line and St. David's, uh, the house. And it was the, it was the, the time when, when Johnny McWilliam came to see how the sale was. Um, and we arrived down at the mark with one reef in and a good old swell and went into the jibe. And as we went into the jibe, we, hadn't, we weren't going fast enough. And as we stalled on the wave and came to almost to a standstill in the middle of the jibe, which is an absolute sure way to, do, to know that you're, that's the end of you. So I remember sort of saying, I remember saying, Jez, we're gone. And Bernard turning, Bernard Darcy was third handing, said, said what? By, by he hadn't finished saying what by the time, by the time we'd gone, <laughs> um, and uh, again there was no there was no Bonsi in, in in the boat. Johnny McWilliam was wearing a bo bobble hat, bobble hat, and Bernard Darcy said he saw this bobble hat floating on the water, and then a second later Johnny McWilliam's head appearing underneath it and lifting it out of the water. And, and turning to me and saying, are there any crocodiles in the water, this water, Peter? And Robin and Julian Cubitt were the, doing the crash work, and they came over to, to tow us back to, 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 to the club. And I said, no, 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 don't take us back to the club. Tow us back, tow us into St. David's. And uh, Bernard and, and, uh, and Johnny looked at me and said, uh, uh, why do we want to go there? And I said, you'll see, you'll see. So the, the, um, the, the Cubits towed us into, into St. David's and left us there and, and beside the quay. And we started to bail the boat out there. And, and Johnny said, you know, so, so what are we doing here? And I said, turn around and look. And so he turned around and he saw, we saw Posey Goodbody coming down the, 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 the lawn from St. David's, carrying a tray on which she had three large, hot, steaming whiskies. I said, that's really why we've come in here. Because every, every boat who capsized off St. David's, if they went into, say, if they went to, into the, to, 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 to bail out in, 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 in in her, her jetty, she would always come out with three, three hot whiskies. So that's why we went in there. And other than that, I didn't do an awful lot of capsizing. And all I can say is, is very few, if you are going to capsize, try and do it um, to, a, to a, a, a live audience. It's, it's, all, it's all very well to have a little cheer from somebody going past you in another Shannon as they, as they see you falling over. But it's nothing like as good as having 
the whole of, 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 of the shoreline cheering you. So if you're doing it, try and do it like Eliza, Eliza Cleary did in, in, in the 59 one, yeah, uh, inside Goose Island, which was always a popular place to, 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 to capsize because you were just going in there very often on the jibe. And, uh, but she, she, she capsized there and uh, Hooker came out of his, out of his starter's heart and said, Eliza, you can't stay there, that's my finish line. Uh, but she said, well, what am I meant to do? <laughs> so trying to do that, I only, I only capsized once in a, with a good audience, and that was up in, in, uh, in, in Terry Glass, which was, which was nice. Uh, I capsized, uh, I had uh, a crew down from Dublin and Bernard Darcy. Uh, I don't know whose boat I was sailing, but uh, we capsized. It was very, very puffy, and we were going towards the towards the quayside um, and we, 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 we capsized simply because uh, the sheet hand failed to, to let go of the sheet so we simply just rolled slowly over and sank but I must say it was the best it was one of the best best auditions I best thing, a round of applause I've ever had was in, from that from that capsize so I can thoroughly recommend it might as well if you're going to capsize do it in style Oh, so that's about it really, for, 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 for the sailing. Uh, apart from the fact um, of, of, uh, of the other boats that I, I did sail, that I found ex really good. Um, the 99, I thought, was an exceptionally good boat. And I must say, I loved it when I sailed for Peter, I had for Peter and Georgina um, in one in a regatta. When I arrived down at the regatta, literally, with sort of a half an hour to go to the start gun of the first race and uh, we, on the way out to the start I said to Peter and Georgina this I think we better you know try a couple of tacks to see how we get on doing attack um, and so we, we did attack and uh, it was it was a quite amazing we having been having one having thought that we, we, she would sort of stop in, or, you know, do we, be a bit lumbering in the, in the, in the tack. She was, uh, she, she almost didn't, didn't pause for breath. And Peter Marvihill said, he saw, he saw, he saw me, my eyebrows raised in, 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 into my, into my woolly hat I was wearing and thought to himself, oh, well, it seems we're in, we're, we're in for a good time. And indeed they were. And we, we had a great regatta. And I, we won just about all everything we wanted to win, except the Belle Plate. We were second in the Belle Plate because it was after lunch and it actually wasn't a, 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 a championship race. And we'd been up in the, in, 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 the, in, the, in the whiskey still and got a little bit pissed. And we went out and we were only second. I remember Harder Swaller saying, uh, well, you can't win them all. But in actual fact, uh, I came back and sailed Peter and Georgina's boat again a few, a few years later, only in the Belle Isle Plate. We went out to win it, and we were actually going to be third. Um, and it was being won very comfortably and easily by Brian Craig. And second was Philip Watson, and we were third. And as, had, as, as, as it happened, um, they hadn't actually run, written down the course properly because they'd missed out a, a mark. You didn't have to go very far out of, out, out of your way to get around it, but they went around the wrong side of a mark. Um, so it ended up that the two of them were disqualified and we actually fecking went, went and won the fecking bell our plate. So that was a, a rather strange, uh, but not a uh, bizarre turn of events. Um, another another boat I sailed and I thought was absolutely lovely was the 50. I think everybody thinks the 50 is, is beautiful and I only sailed it once well that was up in the Kong regatta um, when we were only just three boats uh, um, involved um, 
the 96, the 50, and, and a newly built boat out of Galway, um, which was very heavy. Um, and on the first day, the guy, the guy in, the, in the newly built boat um, wasn't doing very well. In fact, well, he was kept on being third by a very long way. So on the, on the second day, we decided between, uh, uh, between us all that, that, that we'd swap boats and that uh, we'd each uh, sail the, one of the other boats for one of the races. So I sailed, I sailed the 50 in, in, in one race and I thought this was a, a, a lovely boat. Um, the boat I would have loved to have sailed and never did um, was the 119, the Pink Panther. Um, I've often watched her sail and thought to myself uh, that she, she just seemed to go through the water with a slightly finer bow or something than, than, than the other Shannons. And I'd love to have, have a go in her. Um, but uh, one of the things, before I finish, one of the things that I, I loved uh, when, when I was a little boy and sailing down in, in, in being a, going out for other, other people in, 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 as a third hand was uh, um, they would take me out in, 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 in uh, if races if they were very, if if the weather was light if there was the weather was uh, blowing they wouldn't uh, they wouldn't I wouldn't be considered that was fine um, but uh, so I got to sail with uh, with with Sid Shine and uh, and and uh, uh, Hardress Waller and and um, and. Uh, uh, um, Old, um, uh, the, the old Miss, old General Waller, um, and uh, but I never got to sail, and and uh, I never got to sail with either Bunny or Ralph. Um, although uh, Bunny would never be all that keen on giving one inf information, but I remember once much, and Alf I never ever dared ask. But I remember once. Um, after a race in, when I was sailing with so 78, and Alf was below me, and I was ahead of him, and he still, he still managed to sail up um, to such a extent that, that, that uh, he came up and hit me, <laughs> and I had to go home. And, and I went to him afterwards and asked him, you know, how did he manage to do that? Because he, theoretically, he shouldn't have been. He, he should have been in my, my in my in, you know, in my dirty wind. And, and uh, anyhow, he told me, and that helped me a lot later. Um, but yeah, and, and uh, so I had quite fun as sailing secretary. Um, the uh, the only things I can think of that I was proud of, I was proud of. Uh, of, of getting all the all the, the shannons and the lasers and the mirrors to sail together off the same starting line at the same time, and then of course they before that they were all separated, and very often they wouldn't even talk to each other in the pub, and I sort of got them talking to each other a bit more, and they everyone suddenly realised that we weren't we weren't uh, totally inhuman in in the, in the shannon class. Um, and uh, the other thing I, 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 I liked was the, I got, I, I got uh, team racing back for a day. It wasn't, it wasn't exactly um, Lock Doug versus Lock Wee, but they were both involved. Um, but we had, we had, and it was all in Optimus. I don't suppose you could do, do that now because most people think they're Optimus and almost more precious than their children. Um, but, uh, then we, they, 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 was, they were nice old, most of them were optimists and, and with little, you know, with, with not with great um, uh, expensive sales. And, uh, uh, and we got everyone to sell. We had, we had, we had six or seven or eight uh, um, teams and it all bold. And uh, all I remember was uh, uh, in the, in the lock dog versus lock we, 
um, uh, team race. So the, um, uh, Louis Courtney put put uh, left left uh, Alf Delaney up onto the on, on, onto the Goose Island, um, which, <laughs> uh, so things hadn't changed that much. But I, I some people could tell me on, uh, afterwards if they do the still do the um, team racing between uh, between Wags and 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 Shans because I thought that was great fun. I'd love to do that again. Not so. <laughs> um, uh, and the other thing I loved was the, the, the doing was or the, was uh, the year that um, Tony Dean died. I start, we started the, the Colonel's Whiskey Handicap, and the the idea was that you you got a, a, a second uh, handicap for every second every year the boat was old, and a, a second for every year that the crew was old. Um, and uh, some some people were taking this frightfully, frightfully seriously. Uh, uh, but what the, the clear winner, or should have, what should have been a clear winner, was um, was Tom and Gene Kelly in the, in uh, from 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 uh, from, across, from across in County Clare, because they had between them and their boat, and they had they had a. a a crew that was hand, it was nearly nearly two hundred seconds of of of, uh, of uh, oh yes nearly two I think over two hundred seconds of, of 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 handicap and the boat was old enough um, but unfortunately they they capsized on the way on the way back towards the finish and anyhow it didn't uh, so so we we couldn't we couldn't give them the the the, the, the trophy uh, and. Um, but the best thing was we was was all the all we had a lot of disqualifications, um, and even though Louis Courtney wasn't wasn't sailing in that race, um, we, dis we, dis we we disqualified disqualified him for on, on thirty four counts over the past 50, forty years for for, for rule rule tran transgressions, um, and I think that was about only fair. Um, so that's about it, I think. Um, uh, yes, uh, I can't think of anything else. Uh, probably, yeah, I think we'll call it a day at that. Excellent, thank you very oh, much. My, my pleasure. I think everyone will agree that that was really, really interesting. Um, I think <laughs> Mum is going to be delighted with the honourable mention. Um, she thought <laughs> really highly of that time that you guys sailed in Derg and called you the hired assassin, if I remember correctly. Yes, um, yes. And was very disappointed with the Bella of Late loss. Um, I think it's one everyone likes to get. Yes, um, yes. Well, we made up for it. Oh, oh, well, we didn't make up for it, but God, God sort of made up for it somehow. Definitely. Well, <laughs> I mean, I think we'll open it up to some questions. Um, I'm sure people have questions. So if you'd like to unmute yourself. Oh, hi, Philip. Hi, Peter. Thanks very much for most interesting reminiscences of the old times. There was <laughs> one thing I just wanted to ask you. you, you I, what was it you learned from Al Delaney? You just said you learned it. We didn't hear what yeah. it was. Yes, yes, okay, right. Uh, he basically he, he showed me that my the, the leech the leech on my sail was was far far too tight. It it was uh, it was it was it was really hooking back in, in a ridiculously um it's so was the belly was a huge big belly of his hair and and the leech was far far too tight. And I oh, was yeah, just going slow. And he was able to sail quicker than you while in your dirty wind. Yeah, that is. yeah. And I wasn't able to point as high wow. as him. And and he just came yeah, up from yeah, underneath yeah. me, and 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 and, and eventually just leant out and bang, banged his 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 elbow on 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 my gun and said, "Go home." <laughs> oh, that's a bit naughty. Yeah. And I heard you talking earlier about this shifting yourselves from the mast and running out quickly. And yeah. you probably know, but that's banned now. It's called ooching and it's illegal. 
<laughs> oh, no. Yeah, sorry about that. Sorry, you can't do that. It's a great idea. It's very fast, but still, it's not allowed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I knew that I should do it just a few times. Thanks, Peter, for a great presentation. I'll pull out now. Thank you. Somebody else, uh, I'm sure, has some Okay, you're okay, Philip. Bye now. Peter. Yeah. Smithy here. Um, I just was rem remembering your the trophy that you and Joe presented, uh, the Leech Memorial. It yes. Was, you, you called it the Leech Memorial Memorial the Memorial Monstrosity, as far as I yeah, remember. The, Lin, the Lynch Hodgkinson Memorial Monstrosity. And, and it was to be presented yeah. manually or once a year. That's it, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, well done for remembering that, yeah. The other thing I was going to say is when, when, you, when you publish this lot and you have your photograph on the front, as you are now, I hope you'll call it One Man and His Pussy. <laughs> <laughs> Pussy. <laughs> <laughs> Peter, Jeff here, thank you so much for wonderful reminiscences and, and, and I just recall very clearly that your, our dear Bruce sister um, treated us so kindly in the, in the back of the old clubhouse and was yes. it Fred Price who took the large sums of money? Was it a Fred Price who was a neighbour? That's um, right, yes, yes. Look. It was to take the money, and it was a battle royal. It was a battle royal against the wasps, because the, 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 the whole place was just sugar, was just running in sugar, and the, the, the wasps who couldn't get into the in, into get it where, where where the tea ladies were because they were behind the grill. Was that, as, soon as, as soon as they came out on, onto the tables, you know they 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 set to, and you were you were there, you were there. With, with 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 all these drunken drunken wasps who were getting completely overexcited with with all the sugar, and the best thing to do was to have a to arm yourself with a regatta regatta um, program. That was quite a good, good wasp slaughter, and you whack whack the wasp with that. And, and well, there was an amazing amount of wasps, I must admit. But it was it was the best two and six or two two shillings worth you'd ever get. Those, those, those teas. Hello, Peter. Uh, John. Oh, hi, hi, John. Hi there. Hiya. How are you keeping? Not too bad yourself. Thank you very much for a very entertaining uh, presentation. Uh, we, well, we've given a few minutes to take one of the horses. But tell me something. Did you mention your contender? Oh no, I didn't. Well, yes, what a disaster! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's quite. Mm -hmm. oh, well, the contender it was it was quite a nice boat, but but um, uh, I I was it was it was it was due to replace the fin at the time. It was due to replace the fin as a, as the Olympic boat, and I thought well. Um, um, uh, because I'd been working in 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 the in the fact one of the factories that made the boat, um, I came back with with one from from that factory and and uh, uh, but no it was it was uh, I, I sold it back to back to some guy in England and anyhow the the, the laser the lasers was, was a far better single-handed boat um, so I, and I was glad to be to be in the laser part of that. Uh, Peter, do yeah. you remember sailing a regatta with me? in 96 in Derg, you sheeted for me. Oh yes. Well yes. I remember one race and I might even have been at Belle Isle but I'm not 100% sure. But we were leading coming around the Corrakeen sailing for home. Yeah. And you had me absolutely terrified that I was not to look behind me. <laughs> you would do the looking behind. <laughs> and I was just to sail the boat and not to do anything else. Don't look behind you. Oh, well, yes, I do remember that. I do remember. I do remember telling you to know not to look behind you. I can't remember what was going on behind, behind you. I but think Peter anybody... Wilson was right behind us. <laughs> <laughs> I think he stayed. Right... But he stayed right behind you, didn't he? Yes, yes, you did. Yeah, no, right. I didn't let you down. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love. I, I hope we. Uh, I'd love to see the uh, the twenty-four hour race reinstated in Nock Dug. I thought that was great. 
in the, in the one that I did with, with, with in, 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 in the 96. Katie would probably not in, agree, but... Uh, you, that time you terrified Hetty Sanders because you <laughs> wanted to play a game while you were sailing the race and you told her that you were playing the game and it was called sailing. <laughs> 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 and of course, the 96 won. <laughs> and the 96 won, indeed we did. I mean, yes, it didn't look good at one stage, though. <laughs> Do we have any other questions? Or comments? Hello there, I'm a late joiner, Dan O'Connor here. Okay. And I was, I'm sorry that I missed nearly everything, but uh, are there are the regattas in Re and Derg actually going ahead in some fashion? Yes. Please? Yes. Yes. Okay. Thank you. We're it's going ahead in the normal fashion. Oh. <laughs> we just don't know what we're doing about food or drink, but that'll all happen hopefully. Substantial. It'll all sort itself out. One, one week before the regatta, we're going to announce what, we, what arrangements we have on the shore. We Thank have you. the on the water, anyway. Uh, Peter, uh, I ask you this question. Um, very interesting. You appear to have learned sailing almost uh, um, with Guy Landon. And um, so you, maybe this is why you're so good, because you haven't been influenced by in, ISA instructors or any that sort of carry on. I mean, you have a, you're absolutely brilliant in the boat, but you haven't, you, you just haven't been influenced by other, by anything, yeah. nothing, nothing affected your brain. Um, no, well, I, I see well, one thing, my, my father did buy me a, a heron dinghy on one stage and uh, uh, I can't remember, he belonged to a guy called Tom Hodson. And uh, he bought it for 20 quid, and uh, I used to have that. And that was what I used to go, and I sort of taught myself in that, really. I just, uh, they used to let me out. Um, I think I did wear a life jacket, but, but um, and then I'd just go sailing off for the day and come back in the evening. Um, and I might be out literally all day on, on the water, sort of sailing here and there. And uh, yeah, it was a great way to learn. And uh, yeah. Yes, I, yes, I, the problem is that people haven't got the time to do that these days. This, this, uh, uh, and uh, so, I mean, the, the ISA thing and everything is, is, is a good way to, to, to learn. Uh, the only thing I would, would, would uh, caution on is that uh, is so many parents seem over keen for their children to be extra specially good at sailing. And they pre press them in their optimists or whatever it is, and they don't give it. They don't give a sort of a. Um, they don't give them any breathing space, and a lot of them end up really not ha almost hating going sailing after that, and they give it up. Um, whereas it's, there's no better way than just um, be put in the boat and told to teach yourself. I think like that. I was listening to a. Uh, a, a, a lecture by Tom Cunliffe, the, the, um, the, the RYA yacht master in, uh, examiner and guy who cruises all over the world. And uh, he said, when he was, he learned to sail, that, that his father bought him a, a week in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a small dinghy on the Norfolk Broads and sent him and his friend off on, 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 on the boat and said, well, go and teach yourself. And so they did. And, that, uh, and I think that's a, that's a great way to learn. Um, and then I learned a lot through books, I mean, on, on, the, on the tactics, tactics and things. Um, there was one book, and um, maybe Alan know, knows where this is. Alan, right, Alan, Aljo might know where this is. Um, I was, uh, it was a book by um, Stuart Walker, um, an international 14 sailor, and it was a, it was a book on tactics. Um, 
and it was for me it was a, it was a better book than the Elvestons books, um, and I lo loved that one. And Alan Alzu came to me one day looking for looking for bo bo books books to put in a in a in a library, and I gave him a few books, and I think I gave him that. And I don't know whether Alan knows where that is now or what this. I do, but it's not in a library. Is it, was, it says was it in, the, in Lock Green? I think it's on the Linquenda. <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> it's on the Linquenda. Uh, yeah, but thank you very much. <laughs> I might leave it to a library. Um, <laughs> but there were two other things um, that were remarkable about you was that no matter where you were in the race, that was totally irrelevant. You were going to, you, you never ever gave up. And the other thing was that whenever um, I'd have the privilege to be in the boat with you or vice versa, uh, um, you'd always say, uh, you'd always be concentrating on the next guy. And then you'd say, right, we have him rattled. And that was the end of him. And then you'd be, who's next? <laughs> who's next? Yeah. Anyway. I think, uh, I, I, think, uh, I think you can learn an awful lot by not going sailing, but watching a race. Uh, and two, two things come to mind. Was I remember watching a race uh, in Loch Ree. Um, and it was a, basically, it was, it was a drifter. There was no, hardly any wind. And it was all it turned into almost a soldier's race. And it was won by Alf Delaney in the 37, who was one of the heavier boats. And he had made no effort at all to get a light crew. He had a full crew. And he won it by... Uh, an Irish country mile from Teddy Knight, who was second, and Teddy had two small children in, in, in crewing for him. And I, and I looked, uh, looked at the, what they were doing, and I suddenly realized that it, it wasn't the fact that, 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 that if you, in a, in a really light wind, if you stayed still and let the boat do the work, and stay absolutely still, um, then you gathered momentum. And the 37 was, a, was, a, was very, very good at that. And actually, I remember sailing, for, sailing with you down on the long distance race. Um, and uh, we were actually, I think, in the lead on, on one, one leg, and it was quite light. And David Dixon was just behind us. And I was trying to get you to be still in both mind and body. And you couldn't quite do it. You, were, you kept on saying things. Um, and, uh, but behind us, um, David Dixon was absolutely, absolutely still. And he just came quietly and very slowly. He, he went pious. And I thought to myself, oh, bugger. <laughs> But it, that, that's, a, that's, 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 a, that's the thing. The other thing I, I, I noticed, one, one of the things I used to love in, in lockdown was some, when I was a little boy, when, when, it, when it was blow, blowing hard, was to not, um, when I didn't go out sailing, obviously, that I would watch the racing. And you could see, a, a, you, you could learn a lot. Um, from from the way people started and everything like that, um, but then I remember we got these strange things. I remember um, um, uh, Bertie Waller, Bertie Waller in the '64, and he hadn't won the race, but he he'd done quite well. But he they they gone round Goose Island as you do after the finish, and he he. Having gone round Goose Island, he was already on the plane going, going back in towards the, the, the jet, towards the jetty. But instead of winding up for the jetty, he just stood up in the boat, put, picked up his, waved his cap in the air, and kept whooping up straight up the, straight, straight on and, and, and up the slipway, where where, where he bang, banged the centre floor board up and up through the, the, the uh, centre board casing and jumped the. And not the, uh, the the pintles off the off the uh, off the uh, off the back and everything. But uh, it was a, it was a, it was, a, it was a, he, he obviously thought it was well worthwhile. 
she didn't seem to be in at all, at all happy, uh, unhappy about it. But yeah, you get it, you learn a lot racing, you learn a lot by watching. And I remember watching, uh, um, uh, I think it was Peggy Turbot in, in the 50, 55. And she, was, she, she wasn't winning the race, and, but, and they were coming from, from, uh, from Hazel Point back in home again. And the, the first three or four boats had all gone in straight from, from, from that, that um, by Kiltila. So they were, they were going straight for the, from, for, for the finish from Kiltila. But uh, so they got themselves into a sort of much calmer water. Peg, Peggy Turbot stayed out in the middle of the bay. She didn't make any attempt to sort of pass Salmon Island close by. But she stayed out in the middle of the bay and you could see that every time there was a little puff of wind, she'd take that away with her down, downwind. And then when the, the, the puff had gone, then she'd run back up again. But then eventually she was nicely down to leeward of everybody and she was able to laugh up, get a little bit of wind and, and beat the lot of them. And I tried that in, 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 in the same single-handed race in Loch Derg. Um, when I was sailing uh, 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 Dylan Reinhardt's boat, where I managed to be second last out of 40, 40 boats at the first Windward Mark. And so I said, well, I'm not falling all that lot. And, and so and I did the pe Peggy Tower, and I just kept the puffs, holding the puffs all the way downwind, keeping always as far as I could, uh, never going, never having, having a, uh, the goose island, anything but on my starboard bar, until I got far enough down that I could laugh up a bit and, and sail faster. With the, and and I, I picked up, I think, 10 or 15 boats the first, uh, the first downwind leg, and then um, picked up another five or six, six boats on the next upwind leg, and eventually finished the, finished the, the, the race in single figures. Um, so uh, by doing the same thing again on the next downwind leg, so it's the thing to think about. Um, yeah, sorry, <laughs> that's me banging on. Anybody else? Uh, it's Alan Reinhardt here. Uh, Alan. We, how are you? We, we had some wonderful years of sailing together. We did. Berg and, and Ree, but I just, just reaffirm what you were saying about uh, sitting in the boat with no wind. I remember on the long distance race, I can't remember what year it was, but we we sailed down from um, Banagher, heading yeah. for Mealick Lock, and we got into that little stretch of the canal before the lock. Yes. And the, um, there was, wasn't a breath of wind. Yeah. There was one boat ahead of us on the canal, and uh, they were trying hooshing and whooshing and everything, but we, you said, no, everybody sit on the floor. So the three of us were sitting on the floor with our feet on the gunnels. And we, um, of course, what we, we pointed straight up, we pointed straight up the canal. And, went, just let, and we passed, we passed the other boat and Ed Hunter was hiding under the Martello Tower. On, on the western side, and just after we passed the, um, just after we passed the other boat, uh, we got a gun, and uh, we didn't even know where the line was. So anyway, <laughs> what, what what you what you were remembering was that there was, it didn't need wind. There was quite a strong current going down. Yeah, the, yeah, and of course every time they open the lock, there'd be a nice, nice surge <clears throat> and it brought us down there very comfortably. Yeah. Yes, so, there was never, it was, there was, you were doing yourself a disfavour if you tried to tack up that thing. Yeah. You just had to find straight down the, 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 the lock and just let it, let it take its course, yeah. Peter? Uh, yes, Billy. Great talk, thank you very much. 
just thinking you can take this sitting still to the extreme. Yeah, uh, we were sailing down from, uh, it must have been Kiltila yeah. in the 83, and we had Andrew Healy on the sheet and Nick Healy in the bow, which was a great yeah. competition. And we were actually in the lead. And behind us, we had the 37, which had, you know, all the Delaney's and all the Wilson's and everybody else that could possibly get on board. Yeah. And we had quite a comfortable lead. And uh, Nick, sitting in the bow, was always liked to be the first person in the first boat over the line. Andrew was concentrating on the sail. But the 37 catch, kept catching us. And I was looking at the sail and I was looking at Andrew, looking at Nick and... and beginning to slightly panic. And then I looked at Andrew again, and I discovered, in fact, that he was so still, he'd actually gone to sleep. <laughs> um, and it was only when uh, I woke him up did we actually prevent a complete disaster. And we managed to stay, we managed to stay in the lead and to cross the line first. But there is a problem then, if you do stay too still, Keep an eye on your sheet hand. Yes. Well, <laughs> oh, I know. Mind you, yes, I mean, and, 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 and keep, and, 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 and keep switched on. I mean, I, I, I have to, I think I can now say that the final race of the Lock, Lock Dag Regatta, where, which, um, uh, I should have won the, I should have won the, 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 the championship. Um, and I only had to finish that race to do so. And we were second going around the, 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 the windward mark. And we, our hardest was ahead. And we, uh, we sort of settled down to the bottom of the boat and said, well, fine, that's job done. And we, we can settle down and, and, uh, and go home. Well, and what I didn't, well, what, what I wasn't thinking of was, is it, is, was, it's never over so the fat lady sings. We bumped into Peter Wilson on the way down. He was coming on in the opposite direction. And so we had we were disqualified. So <laughs> and you won the championship, I think. Oh thank you very much. Was that then when we um went down to Killaloo and sailed the 420? Oh gosh. That's polite yeah. of you, yes. That's oh gosh. Oh my god, that's yes, yes. and uh Good old John Lefroy. Where is John? Thank you very much, John. John came down with two Emerald Starline boats. And uh, we had, we did reasonably well, but on the way back, we, I think we ran out of booze. And John disappeared. Um, there's John. Uh, should I continue? John disappeared off in the lake boat for Gary Kennedy, leaving us in charge of one Emerald Starline boat. It was pitch dark, I think, at the time. And then there was someone behind us. And I think, John, if I'm right in saying, when you came out, you couldn't actually see where we were. <laughs> um, you eventually arrived with the booze, but that was a great weekend. And I think, I think that must have been it, yeah. The only, the only way I found the, the, the boat was its bow wave. <laughs> the white bow wave. Apart from that, it was black dark. Yeah. <laughs> ah. I'll mute. If there isn't any more questions, we might leave it there. Any final questions or comments or anything? Okay. Well, thank you very much, Peter. And oh, thank my, you my, my pleasure. pleasure. And thank my pleasure. you to all of give our... My, give, my regards, give my regards to your mum when you see her. I will indeed. I will indeed. She's in work or she would have been here. Right. Um, Anna. Thank you to everyone who's joined us over the last couple of weeks. I think it's been really well received and I think everybody's really enjoyed it. Um, we will potentially pick it up in the winter months. Um, but for now, hopefully, we'll all see each other on the water soon. Well, Thanks, Thank you so much to Eric and Naomi for organising it. It's been brilliant. Absolutely. Absolutely brilliant. Yeah. Thank yeah. you so much. Thank you. And thank you, Peter. Thank you. Thanks, Peter. Bye. Thank you Peter Thanks. very much. Thanks, Peter. Get you all on the water. Thanks, Peter. Thanks, Peter. Thanks, Peter. <laughs>